I'm not lying to you right now. I really do mean this. I'm not lying to you right now. I really do mean this. I'm not lying to you right now. I really do mean this. And now the gentleman from California, Mr. Kahana, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you to Ranking Member Thompson for his leadership. Uh, Mr. Duffy, you obviously have uh, very strong opinions about cryptocurrency, so let's start with the basics. Uh, could you tell the committee uh, what you understand and how you define blockchain? And can you tell us some of the use cases uh, of cryptocurrency for um, the American public? Yeah, you know, I had a conversation with somebody in the industry, and I believe that the use case of cryptocurrency. If you could start with the definition of blockchain, how do you understand blockchain? The, the blockchain is is a node, uh, either centralized or decentralized, uh, run by different platforms with parts of information that only certain people that have access to it can uh, change that information. And once it's in the blockchain, it stays there. And in order to amend the information, it, it, it's a lot of procedures and protocols to go through the blockchain. It's a very complicated procedure. I think it's an excellent form of uh, commerce for medical records, things of that nature. So I, I do think- And what do you see as some of the use cases? Use cases of blockchain? Yeah, and cryptocurrencies and some I, of the- Well, the use, I don't know for... if there's a use case of here. The, the one blockchain that's been talked about today is Ethereum. Do you see Ethereum. a use case for stable coins? Do I think there's a use case? I, I'm happy to answer your question, but which one do you want me to answer? Uh, stable coins, yes or no, do you think there's a use case? Do I think there's a use case for stable coins? I think there was until the other day. That didn't go so well for stable coins, so I'm not so sure if there's a use case for them. I do believe central you, governments... You don't think the, there's a use case for stable coins? Okay, do you think there's a use case for Solana? I think the, I think the United States government, sir, needs to be involved, and central banks around I mean, the world I was just asking you, do you think there's a use case for Solana or some of the other... Of the top I, 10 cryptocurrencies... I'm not a crypto think, expert, sir. I list Bitcoin and Ether. Well, yeah, you certainly have opinions about crypto. I do. I have Peter opinions about an application, sir, not about cryptocurrency. Now, you, you talk about here under Pardon oath, me? you say, if I could just quote you, because you may want to take this back. I don't know. I don't take you anything say back. You FTX, FTX, well, you're under oath, sir. I am, I'm not under oath, no I understand. FTX has no capital requirements for participants. Is that really, are you going to stick to that under oath? Because C, the CFTC's Part 39 regulation requires capital requirements for uh, FTX or uh, for any of these exchanges. Are you really saying they have zero capital requirements? Or do you want to amend that statement given you know, under oath? Sir, you're moving away from your microphone. I'm at, can you read the statement that you'd like me to? Yeah, I'm, I'm asking you, sir, you have a saying so that FTX has, quote, no capital requirements for participants. I, I think that's on its face a false statement, given that the CFTC Part 39 regulation requires capital requirements, and FTX does have a capital requirement. Uh, for uh, for margins. I said are their capital requirements are not the same as they are for other institutions. Well, I that's said, not what you said, sir. Under oath, you have yet submitted to this committee a statement that is false. You have said the regime has no capital requirements for participants. I would strongly recommend that you have someone on your team. Well, I'd like to read statement. that statement because I happen to disagree with you, sir. Well, it's your testimony. <laughs> It's your no, I get testimony. it. I'd like to see the statement that you are referring you, yeah, to. I'm I can't just go off of what you're reading. Testimony? You're here, you're capital is capital testimony. is not the same as margin, Congressman. Well, sir, I, I I want you to after this submit something that is accurate, recognizing you're giving testimony to the United States Congress. You don't know much about cryptocurrencies. You're opining on cryptocurrencies, and then you're giving false statements to the Congress <laughs> that you aren't even staying. Uh, that you. You weren't even uh, knowing that you're submitting. You write FTX, quote, has no capital requirements for participants. That's just false. Sir, I'll be happy to read my testimony back to you uh, if you would like. But if you want to make this into a court of law, I'm happy to participate in that. Well, as it's well. not a court of law. It's that you can't go give false statements to the United States Congress. You I'm well aware, sir. I've testified in front of this committee over 50 times. I'm well aware of the procedures of this committee. Well, then can you, I, I would submit, submit that you need to Correct the record, because you have, quote, your testimony, no capital requirements for participants, that anyone who has basic understanding of the CFTC knows that Part 39 would make that uh, a completely wrong statement. Of course, there are capital requirements. 
and I suggest in the future that you do some homework on what cryptocurrencies well, are. Well, I appreciate you telling me to do my homework. I assure you, sir, in the amount of years I've been in this business, I forgot more than most people ever know. Well, I appreciate it. I hope you will correct the record so you're accurate and not giving false testimony. I don't give false testimony, sir. It's not what I do. I yield back my time. I had a meeting with Sam Bankman Freed for the first time in March this past year. I never met the man. He asked to meet with me at a conference. And I sat down with him. I said, what is your end goal? He says, well, I want to compete with you. I said, great. I'm all for competition. What do you want to do? He says, well, I want to compete with you in crypto. And I said, why would you do that? I said, I'll, I'll give you one better. How about if I give you my crypto franchise that's worth $30 million and we'll go from there? He says, well, what do you want? I said, you know what I want. Let me be your risk manager. Mm -hmm. I'll clear it to make sure it's done properly. He says, well, you won't deploy my model. I said, your model is crap. Why would I deploy a model that's going to introduce risk to the system? Of course, I'm not going to deploy your model. He turned me down, flat out turned me down. And that's right away I said to him, I said, you know what? You're a fraud. You're an absolute fraud. You're supposedly worth $26 billion and you're an altruist. And you, I said, if you're an altruist at $26 billion, how come there's not a $10 billion donation going to somebody right this moment in time? How about a $15 billion donation? I said, you know what? I said, my net worth doesn't start with any Bs. I'll give you three to one that I have more money than you. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you four to one. I got more money in my right pocket than your net worth. I said, you're a fraud and I'm going to make sure that we get this out there. And that was it. So we went to Congress. I testified and I've been to Congress 25 years. I've never seen a Washington, D.C., like I saw that time, from the regulators to the members of Congress singing hymns that I never heard before. Mm -hmm. And I got berated in a congressional hearing, but I would not back off. I said that you could lose 85 to 90 percent of your value overnight. And I said, he will not commit to keeping this just to crypto. I said, the reason is because he wants to deploy it across all asset classes. I said, that is a biblical disaster if you people allow this to happen. Well, I didn't know how right I was going to be in a short period of time because he lost 85% of his FTT tokens in mm -hmm. literally one day. So the point being is we went through this whole thing and then I worked back with the agency and I said, they wanted to approve it for just crypto. I said, well, that would be lovely, except that would be an arbitrary decision to approve a regulatory change for one asset class. And they argued with me, said, no, it's not. We have the ability to do it. I said, well, we're going to have an argument here because I will sue. And so we'll sue the agency over this because we think it's wrong. We need. And I met with every agricultural producer in this country and I explained to them exactly if their asset class went under this type of model, what could happen to their hedges at 11 o'clock on a Saturday night when they're unbeknownst to what's going on, when they're being auto liquidated and they think their crops are hedged. I said, this is the most detrimental thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So I'm upset by this, but I'm a measured upset. Mm -hmm. I'm a very measured upset because nobody else was calling BS on these clowns but me. My friends at the Intercontinental Exchange are the only other exchange that said, we do not like this as well. Everybody else wanted to talk about the innovation. 